Allahi Rabbil Alameen Sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammadin Wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam My dear respected brothers and sisters We do apologize Because we've been having a hard time With uh, the connection And it happens once in a while To something beyond our control We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To facilitate this affair for us We were uh, talking, Barakallahu Feek, about the benefit of the fast. Talking about the the benefit of the fast. And I mentioned, Barakallahu Feek, uh, the ayah from Surah Al Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya you are Ladina Manu. كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون who you who believe fasting has been prescribed on you as it was prescribed on those before you so that you can learn to attain a taqwa so that you can attain a taqwa so this is the reason why fasting is obligatory upon us it's not just to torture our bodies and to become hungry and to become thirsty and the like. It's beyond that. It's beyond that. So not only do you abstain from food and drink and your desires and the like, but also you abstain from that which is haram, like lying, like uh, backbiting, tail carrying, and uh, slandering people. And uh, speaking ill about the people. And accusing innocent people and the like. All these matters are haram in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. But in Ramadan is even worse. Is even worse. Because this is a sacred month. Uh, the month where a servant is supposed to be very watchful of what he or she does. Because you don't want to lose your reward. You don't want to lose the reward after fasting and breaking the fast and doing the same thing over and over and reciting the Quran. And I want to say something that reciting the Quran is good, alhamdulillah, that the more you recite, the more a reward you get for every letter, letter that you recite, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you ten times for every letter that you recite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you ten times. But at the same time, Al-Quran was revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we can implement it. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned this in the hadith. He said, وَالْقُرْآنُ حُجَّةُ لَكَ وَعَلَيْكَ And the Quran is either an argument for you or against you. So if you put it to practice and you implement it, then the Quran will be for you. Will be for you and they will intercede for you as it came in the hadith. Of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the Quran was siyam fasting, they intercede for the believer on the day of the judgment. So we have to benefit from the Quran. We benefit from the recitation, and also we benefit from the implementation of that recitation. The Quran, some of it is to heed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Tawheed al-Rububiyya and speaks about Tawheed al and the Tawheed of his names and attributes. And he also commands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, do this, don't do this. So there is a command and there is a prohibition. So we have to comply with the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to refrain from the prohibition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited us to do. So if we comply 
with the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we refrain from the prohibition then we have implemented the Quran and if we don't we will be like the children of Israel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned them in the Quran in Surah Al-Jumu'ah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says مثل الذين حملوا التوراة ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفارا the similitude of those who were supposed to carry out the Torah but they did not carry it out they did not implement it it's like a donkey carrying loads of books the donkey is not going to benefit from the loads of books likewise the one who does not implement Al-Quran will be like that donkey who's carrying loads of books but the donkey is not benefiting from those books. So we don't want to be like the children of Israel. Al-Quran is not only for recitation but also for implementation. So we have to put this you know, you have, we have to take this seriously and think about it. That the Quran is not only for uh, recitation, but also for implementation. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to take some time now to answer some questions some of the brothers sent. One of the brothers is saying, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. He said his family is in Guyana currently, has zero income due to the COVID 19. Is it permissible for me to send my zakat al mal to them and it will be counted? It is permissible, barakallah fiqum. It is permissible to send zakat al mal to your family to your family, even if they were parents. Because the origin, if you spend on them, if you spend on your parents, there is, you don't give them the zakat. This is what the scholars have mentioned. If you spend on them, then you don't give them the zakat. But if you don't spend on them, and they are needy, like this, what you mentioned, then you give them your zakat, zakat al-mal, they are more worthy of it than someone who is an outsider. Also, another brother, he sent a question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. He said, when my son was reciting in Salat al-Taraweeh and was finishing Surat al-A'raf, the last ayah was a sajda, so he made the sajda and came back up and started Surat al-Anfal. When the last ayah of the surah is a sajda, are you allowed to make the sajda and come back up and perform ruku' or must you recite something afterwards before going for ruku' Either way is fine. Either way is fine. So if you go back up, if you wish, you can make ruku' Now. And if you wish to read more, you can read more. Either way is fine. Alhamdulillah, al-amr wasi'ah. Al-amr wasi'ah. This mara is vast. The affair is vast. So you can either recite, or you don't have to recite. Barakallah fikum. Also, I would like to remind you, brothers and sisters, about zakat al-fitr. Alhamdulillah, we have a list of the families who are in need. And anybody would like to have access to that list, you you could just text me, inshallah, and I will send you uh, the list, inshallah ta'ala, and you'll be able, inshallah, to make contact with these Muslim families. And you can also give them your zakat al-mal as well. You can give them zakat al-mal as well. Naam. So after this, we're going to take some benefit from zakat
باي الشيخ العلامة محمد بن صالح العثيمين رحمه الله تعالى and you know every عبادة has a حكمة behind it every عبادة has a حكمة behind it has a wisdom behind it and this is what the, the scholars uh, they call it مقاصد الشريعة مقاصد الشريعة the intent of the legislation the intent of the legislator Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to give the zakat? Look at the benefit that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned. He said the first benefit, it is abiding by one of the pillars of Islam upon which rest an individual prosperity in this worldly life and in the hereafter. So first of all, you have to look at it as Something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do. He commanded you to do. And this is a pillar of Islam. This is the third pillar of Islam after the Salat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commanded you in the Quran. Allah said, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ Establish the Salat and give the Zakat. So it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second, he said, it brings a servant close to his Lord and increases his faith. This is the case with all of the acts of worship. So now, this is an act of worship, ibadah. And when you comply with the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will love you and will be pleased with you. Because you are accepting his command wholeheartedly and you are submitting to his command subhanahu wa ta'ala number three what comes as a result of doing it such a great as a great reward Allah says Allah will wipe away the reward of usury riba you think you're gaining by charging people interest And exploiting your brothers and sisters, they want to buy a house, they want to buy a car, and then you overcharge them. You think you're going to gain from this usury and this profit from this usury? You're not going to gain. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He will wipe it away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will wipe it away. You're not going to get no benefit from it. Allah will wipe away the reward of usury and increase that of charity. Allahu Akbar. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 276. So don't you ever think that when you give sadaqah that your money is going to diminish and your money is, gonna, is going to be re- reduced. La. No, no, this is not, this is an incorrect understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put blessing in your wealth. And how many people, we have seen people, that they don't, you know, they don't have like a big salary. And subhanallah, when you look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them, blesses their wealth, and they're taking care of their family, subhanallah, they are even saving money on the side. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in their wealth, and they give their zakat. And he says, and that which you give as a gift to others in order that you may increase your wealth by expecting something in return from other people's property has no increase with Allah. But that which you give in zakat sincerely for the sake of Allah, those people shall have manifold increase. Allahu Akbar. Surat Ar-Rum, Ayah 39. Look at this Look at this, subhanallah. If you want increase, manifold, khayrat, ujur, kabira, tremendous reward, this is what you do. You give zakat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever gives away charity, the size of a date, which is earned lawfully, shows you the superiority of earning halal job. Halal job. Since Allah only accepts the good lawful things, Allah will indeed take it with his right hand 
and cause it to grow for its owner, just as one of you raises up his colt to the point that the charity will become like the size of a mountain, brothers and sisters, reported by Bukhari and Muslim. Wallahi, this is enough. Look at this. Look at this tremendous reward that you get. Allahu Akbar. You give the size of a date. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He multiplies it for you because it's coming from a sincere heart. It's coming from a sincere heart. And you're doing it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not seeking the reward from the person that you give it to. Yes, he's your brother in Islam, your sister in Islam. They're destitute. They're less fortunate than you. Allah blessed you more than them. Yeah, I, I can understand that. But you're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Aisha radiallahu anha, when she used to give the sadaqah, she will perfume the dirham, you know, the dirham that she would give to sadaqah. She will perfume it before she puts it in the hand of the, of the needy person or the beggar. And she was asked, why do you do that? She said, I put it in the hand of Allah before I put it in the hand of the miskeen. Look, it's salaf. And Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullah, used to give sugar uh, in sadaqah, used to give sugar. So they asked him, why do you give sugar? He said, Allah said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, لَن تَنَرُوا الْبِرُّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not achieve righteousness until you give out fi sabili Allah from what you love. How many people give from what they love? Some people, they give their leftovers. Very old clothes, tattered. They want to just get rid of them and then they give them to, you know, to the poor and needy, miskeen. Subhanallah, you, you wouldn't like those to yourself. How would you like it to somebody else? Except, especially a miskeen. You buy them nice clothing. You want to see them smiling. You want to see a smile on their face. Allah wipes away the minor sins by, by way of it. As the Prophet wasallam said, giving charity wipes away sins just as water extinguishes water, ex- extinguishes the fire. The word charity, sadaqah here refers to the zakat as well as the supergatory form of charity. And I want to share with you, my, my dear respected brothers and sisters, a true story about a family who were traveling. So on the side of the road, the, the wife, she saw this woman who was in bad shape. So she requested from her husband to stop the car. Her husband was kind of reluctant, but she convinced him Walillahi alhamdan, he stopped the car. So she went to this lady and she took care of her need. She was in desperate need. So she took care of her need. She went back to the car and they resumed their travel. And suddenly, the husband who was behind the wheel dozed off. Subhanallah, he dozed off while he's driving. And then the phone, his wife's phone started ringing, but his wife's phone was not there. So someone called, sorry, okay, his phone, I'm sorry, his phone started ringing. So he woke up, he was startled. When he woke up, alhamdulillah, he started saying, Allahu Akbar. So his wife was like wondering, why are you saying Allah Akbar? He said, Allah saved us from death. We were going to die. Alhamdulillah, for the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that ringtone, subhanallah, when I received that ringtone, I woke up because I actually dozed off. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from dying. Allahu Akbar. Then, uh, it was the lady on the side of the road. 
He said, sir, your wife left her phone with me. So they went back. They retrieved their phone. Look, subhanallah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved this, this family from al maut death, because of sadaqa that they gave. And this reminds me, barakallahu feekum, of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Sana'i al ma'roof, taqi masari al su. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sana'i al ma'roof, doing good to the people, taking good care of the people, doing favors for the people. Allah repels through them calamities. Allahu Akbar. So when you do good deeds, rest assured that you're going to win. You will win in this world and you will win in the, in the next world. And don't you ever underst- underestimate a small deed. And don't you ever underestimate a sin as well. So we should always think about the superiority of these good deeds. The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Shaykh Al-Alam Ibn Uthaymeen, he said from the benefit it has on a person's character, it causes him to follow the way of the generous individuals, possessing kindness, Allahu Akbar. So even if you're not one of them, the fact that you are complying with the commandment of Allah and you're purifying yourself from stinginess, most likely you're, you're on the road to become one of the most righteous people. And you're going to be a very generous person. It will change you from being selfish to being someone who cares about others. Number two, giving the zakat requires a person to characterize himself with the attribute of mercy and sympathy towards his destitute brothers. And Allah shows mercy to those who have mercy on others. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Irhamu man fil ard, irhamkum man fil sama. Show, show mercy to those who are upon the earth. Allah who is above his seventh heaven, above his arsh, above his throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will show mercy towards you. Allahu Akbar. And if your heart doesn't have any mercy, you might as well exchange it with a rock. You might as well exchange it with a rock. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge and righteous action. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us in the, in the, in the status. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us amongst the prophets and messengers wa siddiqeen. والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم